Paris, thank you. As the holiday shopping season approaches, several economists are warning consumers of higher prices and long delays for shipments. That's due to the pandemic-induced supply chain disruption, which is leading to a shortage in everything from microchips to coffee to the supply containers for transporting goods. Joining us to unpack the supply chain crisis are Lawrence Officer, economics professor at the University of Illinois Chicago, Machik Nowak, Interim Dean of Loyola University Chicago's Quinlan School of Business, and Jeffrey Househalter, partner at Chicago Consulting, a local supply chain and logistics consulting firm. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Uh, Lawrence Officer, let's start with you, please. Can you break down what these supply chains are and how they're currently functioning? Well, this is just normal economics. Um, no firm is completely vertically integrated in what it does. So firms produce stuff and it goes to other firms that make the commodity closer and closer to consumers or to the ultimate user. Uh, what we have here basically is worker shortages, partly or largely induced by the government's reaction to the pandemic. Okay, and I think we'll probably come back to that in this discussion as well. Machik Nowak, in your estimation, when did this recent supply chain shortage flare up? Um, I think that it's hard to say. Uh, ultimately, I think it, it, it's been going on since the start of the, uh, the pandemic. Uh, I mean, the, the shortages uh, have, uh, I'm sure uh, everyone watching this has, has experienced, you know, starting with the, the toilet paper shortages and the, the supply chains just simply haven't had the opportunity to re fully recover from that. Uh, the, the global supply chain of today uh, is so interconnected that uh, any disruption at any, anywhere in the world is going to have ripple effects throughout. So if there's a, a sudden surge in, say, Vietnam, that's going to have impacts here. So um, I, I think it's, it's really, there, there hasn't been a moment where we've been able to, to recover. Jeffrey Householder, what are your concerns or what concerns are you hearing from clients uh, and how are you advising them to manage this? So we're seeing two major concerns right now. One is how to control costs and the other is how to keep their customers happy and give them what we would consider a high level of service. Um, as uh, Lawrence and Amachek said, I mean, supply chains have always had disruptions, but they've always tended to be more short term and what we would consider maybe self healing. Um, what we're seeing now is a lot more longer lead times and more severe systemic issues. Um, in addition to COVID, we're seeing uh, transportation bottlenecks and more extreme weather events like uh, the Texas freeze, hurricanes, and the wildfires in the West that are all contributing to supply chain disruptions and uh, either delaying or uh, interrupting what would be a normal uh, smooth supply chain. Machuk, were companies and manufacturers, were they unprepared for the impact of the economic stimulus of 2020? Um, I, you know, I think that, uh, I, I would say that they, they weren't prepared for the, the changes in demand. Nobody was. Uh, the, uh, the, the stimulus uh, increased maybe uh, how much money we had to spend, but it didn't change what we were spending it on. And that was driven by the circumstances. And so I think people, the, the companies simply weren't uh, prepared for those changes in, in demand patterns. People staying at home, difference, uh, differences in what they were purchasing. Uh, so it wasn't so much the stimulus, I think, as, as much as just uh, the demand patterns and, and the, the changes in that. And, and Lawrence, what role do labor shortages play in this problem? I think it plays a major role, but the labor shortages that should be mentioned are not just due to the pandemic itself, but to the government reaction to the pandemic. Let me ask the following question, uh, which is this, how does a centipede walk? I mean, do you think the centipede thinks about move this leg, then the other leg? No, the centipede does it automatically. Well, so does the economic system. The market should should correct these imbalances, what we're calling supply management issues, uh, but it doesn't largely because governments don't let it happen. Um, if we would let the market work, yes, firms cannot foresee the future any more than government can, but firms have a self-interest in keeping the economy going smoothly. I think that there's been too much government intervention in this matter, 
And uh, if the government would back off, I think we would not have these shortages lasting as long as they apparently are. Are, are you saying you think that the government's reaction to uh, the, with regards to the labor shortage, the government supplying uh, the economic stimulus checks and so forth, do you think that's preventing people from going back to work, thus the labor shortage? Yes. That's, that's part of it. Another part is their uh, public health reaction to the pandemic itself. Uh, we have flus every, flu seasons every year, and somehow it doesn't have this adverse effect, effect on the economy. Uh, Jeffrey Househalter, you know, freight travel, also a big local industry here, major lines running through Chicago, um, and there's this major bottleneck in freight traffic currently. What's behind that, and what's going to take for operations and schedules and prices to normalize? So right now, I mean, we've really seen transit lead times growing dramatically and uh, becoming very, very unpredictable. Uh, right now, there's about 65 container ships off the coast of Southern California waiting to be unloaded. So these are large vessels that have many, many, many thousand containers on them. Those containers need to be uh, taken off the ship, put on a rail, brought to Chicago, uh, drayed to a warehouse, uh, and then that warehouse has to begin the unloading process then only return those containers back uh, to the rail yard and they go back to the ports and they go back to the, um, you know, wherever they came from overseas. Um, this system right now, uh, this round trip takes a lot of resources. It takes a lot of time. And right now it's very imbalanced. Uh, we have clients who have containers that they need. Uh, they, they have containers that they can't get rid of. Um, so we're, we're seeing a lot of just imbalance in that marketplace. And what we're seeing companies reacting is they're increasing their purchases. Uh, they're trying to expedite material and they're increasing their inventories. And this just creates even more demand and raises more costs. Um, uh, you asked about when it might end. Uh, I don't actually see this any, ending anytime soon. And I don't think the improvement's going to happen in 2021. Oh, boy. OK, so and Majak, before we let you all go, you know, this is just one part of the economic picture that the Federal Reserve is conferring over this week. What do you expect from tomorrow's Fed policy uh, statement? Um, I, I'm not that I'm not sure about. Uh, I, I will add to, to Jeff's point. I, I, I agree that uh, this is going to uh, nothing's going to change until we have enough of a lull in the supply chain to clear things out. No matter, I don't think there's anything anybody can do to uh, make those containers magically disappear. Uh, so no, no policy is going to change that. And ultimately, it's probably, I would expect it's going to happen. December, there's usually a lull. January, as China such, shuts down for its holiday, so, there should be enough time for And I hate to interrupt. Uh, we're, act we're actually out of time. But hopefully, oh, I'm sure. No, it's all right. We're uh, hopefully early 2021 or um, excuse me, 2022, hopefully. Uh, but that's all the time we've got. I'm going to have to leave it there. Machek Nowak, Lawrence Officer and Jeffrey Householder, thank you for joining us. Thank, thank you. you.